Good morning and welcome back to uh, our weekly chapel time here online. Um, thank you so much ambassadors for coming back each and every Wednesday. Thank you parents, teachers, staff, visitors, and guests. We're so excited that you are here with us today. So let's just start with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, our God, um, thank you um, for another day. We come in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our savior. We're praying that you would be in the midst of this chapel lesson as we learn more about what it means to be reborn. We thank you for Jesus Christ's ultimate sacrifice for our undeniable sin. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. So how many of you have ever had a chance to play with one of these? It's a flashlight. And a flashlight can be something very fun to play with, but it's also a useful tool um, to use when you're looking for something, especially um, in the dark. If I had to go look for something or someone in the dark, I definitely would want one of these so that I could be sure to find exactly what I'm looking for. Today, I want to tell you about someone who went looking for something after dark. Someone who, if he had one of these, probably back in his day, he would have definitely used one, but he didn't have it. But he still went looking. His name was Nicodemus, and he was looking for someone very, very special. Can you guess who it was? That's right, Jesus. Like so many people who had heard Jesus' teaching, Nicodemus was intrigued. He wanted to know more about who Jesus was and what he had to say. So let's take a look and listen. During Jesus' ministry, he taught in public places, performed many miracles, and proclaimed God's truth with great power and conviction. Many people loved him. Others hated him. Some people recognized his power and the mighty wisdom through which he taught, but they could not reconcile his message with their tradition. One such person was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews. People respected Nicodemus for his great knowledge of the law, his strict behavior, and his great wisdom. He had heard of Jesus and was very interested in his teachings, but he had a lot of unanswered questions. You see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were part of the religious leadership of the day. Many of them found their worth in the strict observance of the law. Most of them did not agree with Jesus, while some, like Nicodemus, could not dismiss Jesus' great power and wisdom. Daily, as Jesus taught in public places, the Pharisees came to listen. They asked Jesus many questions, many of which were trick questions, but they could never find any fault with him. It was undeniable that this Jesus was a great prophet sent from God. But was he really the son of God? Nicodemus wanted to speak with Jesus, but because he was a Pharisee, he had to be careful not to be seen with Jesus in broad daylight. He had to find a special time to meet with him. Late one night, guided by the light of the stars and moon, Nicodemus found his way through the dark streets of the city to the place where Jesus was staying. He had a lot of questions about the law about Jesus' teaching, and about Jesus himself. Jesus was prepared to explain to Nicodemus everything he needed to know. That night, Nicodemus would leave a changed man. Jesus explained to Nicodemus that he could not inherit God's kingdom if he was not born again. Born again? Nicodemus was confused. What did this mean? It's impossible for a grown man to become a baby and be born again, Nicodemus answered. But Jesus was not talking about becoming a baby. He was talking about a life change so dramatic, so radical, and so new that it would be like being born again. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God, Jesus explained. Nicodemus began to understand, but he was still confused. How can this be, he asked Jesus, trying to wrap his mind around it. Jesus knew that Nicodemus was having a hard time believing him. If you're having a hard time believing earthly things, it will be very hard for you to believe heavenly things. But you must believe, I am the Messiah. I have come to give people eternal life. The truth began to dawn upon Nicodemus. 
Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus' mission was to give new life. Jesus spoke the truth to Nicodemus patiently and clearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Jesus also told Nicodemus that he came not to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. For Nicodemus, the prophecies in scripture had come true. The Messiah was standing in front of him. What a wonderful revelation. That day, Nicodemus learned about God's love and eternal life. He believed and found his place in the kingdom of God. You know, it's not always popular to be a fan of Jesus. I mean, especially in, in the world in which we live today. Um, and you probably encounter people who have made fun of other people for being Christians or believers. And they may have mocked or laughed at you for being a Christian or for following Jesus Christ. And it's tempting to, to you know, stay quiet or try to hide your faith, but that's not Jesus's will for our lives. God has intended to not only love us as his children, but he loves the mockers and the unbelievers as well. And he doesn't want us to hide our, hide our light. No, he wants us to shine our light bright. Hopefully you can see that a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but he wants us to shine our light bright. He wants us to shine our light in the darkness. You know, one of the, the verses that Jesus said to Nicodemus in our story today was John 3, 16. One of the probably the very first verses you've learned well, maybe not the first one, um, but one of the first verses that you memorize um, as a young believer. And it's John 3, 16. I know you know it, so we can say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's good news. Jesus died for Nicodemus. He died for Pharisees. He died for you and me. He died for all of us and all of those who would even make fun of him. If we hide our faith, sure, we will be sparing ourselves some harassment, some embarrassment, but we'd be keeping a secret that the world desperately needs to hear about. I hope you enjoyed today's chapel lesson. Let's remember the big idea of today's lesson. That when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, we become new creations, just as if we were born again. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come now to say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, your only son, Lord God, whom you sent to die on the cross for our undeniable sin. We thank you, Lord, that because of his sacrifice, we can spend eternity with you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I want to make sure that you understand what it means to be reborn. No, that doesn't mean you get to be a baby all over again. What that means is you want to live a new life where God is at the center and you want him to make you a new creation. One where you're following his will, his way and his purpose for your life. And so many of you have already begun that journey. When you first said, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. And when you, when you accepted him into your heart and asked him to reside in you, that means to live in you, to lead you on the path of righteousness so that you can live your life fully in Christ. That's all it means to be reborn. No, you're not gonna be a baby again, but you will have a new life in Christ. And the only way we do that is when we accept him as our savior. No babies, no more pacifiers, okay? So I know we have some birthdays to celebrate. This week we are celebrating... to ya happy birthday to ya happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday yeah 
Happy birthday to each and every one of you. And speaking of birthdays, see, we get two birthdays when we accept Jesus Christ in our life and when we're reborn. We get an earthly birthday and a spiritual birthday. I know you remember uh, Dr. Davis, Reverend Davis, Pastor Davis, um, speak about that at our rededication services in the beginning of the school year. So not only do you get to celebrate your earthly birthday every single year, but if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life and you are a new creation, that means you get another birthday. It's a spiritual one, but it's another birthday. So I'm super excited about next week is Spirit Week. We have so many things for us to do. Monday is Memorial Day, so make sure you rock your red, white, and blue. I'm rocking a little bit today. Bonjour tout le monde. Uh, on Tuesday is TikTok Tuesday. Now listen, don't be shy to do a TikTok video with your family, or you can do a parody, which is a fake TikTok. Um, just do it on Tuesday. Wednesday, I want to make sure that you're staying safe. Rock that safe mask that you should be wearing when you go to the store. And on Thursday, it's social distance twin day. Call up a friend and dress like them. And then on Friday, it's flashback Friday. Make sure that you wear your straight out of HPCA t-shirt or either any HPCA gear. Let's do the benediction. We haven't done a benediction in a long time. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you and I love you with the love of Jesus. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page. You can also visit us on our website at www.hpchristianacademy.com.